Hey survivors, uh, this is part three, I think, of our Looter Too Late series. I'm going to talk a little bit about fire and water today. Uh, trying to do at least two topics on most of these, just so we can uh, keep it simple for everybody. But looking around for ways to purify water, uh, there's the obvious tablets and stuff you'll find in... Uh, the camping section, two or three options with those, nothing major. I did not see any filtered straws at Walmart, but I have seen them in other stores. Still, if for me, for a looter too late situation, I think I'm going to go with uh, standard household bleach. Two drops in 32 ounces of water is about right. Um, <clears throat> Household bleach, I don't picture being a high theft item. I think the other water purification methods may go pretty quick. But the other thing I did was I picked up one of these little empty disposable type bottles that Walmart sells for traveling. It's a three ounce bottle. Uh, big deal. I don't really want to carry around a gallon of bleach or a quart of bleach. So this would be something you could take, transfer your bleach into it, and uh, dispense your bleach into your drinking water that way. It's got a little squeezy top on it. So you can easily do a couple drops at a time, purify your water, and be a lot better off that way on those occasions when you're not going to boil it. Um, so there you go, that's water, that's my plan. Uh, for loot or too late, I'll be using bleach to purify my water. I'll probably put this inside a Ziploc bag, or find something to put over the top here, like uh, a little bit of cellophane, uh, saran wrap, plastic wrap, and then put my cap on here just to make sure it seals a little bit better and I don't leak bleach all over my... Uh, makeshift bug out bag. Fire. Fire is a little tougher. Uh, I don't imagine lighters staying very long in a looter situation. Uh, I think people, a lot of people are going to be stealing alcohol and tobacco are going to be high on the list. So I think men, uh, Lighters are probably going to be right there, you know, as long as I'm stealing tobacco, why wouldn't I steal some lighters too? But I don't know. This is all conjecture, guys. We're, we're guessing. We're trying to uh, anticipate what thieves and uh, desperate people, I guess, are going to do, and we don't know. So I, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm kind of rolling the dice here. Uh, one of the things I did notice is that there was quite a few of these little... They call survival matches over in the camping department. They're uh, just really plain little wooden matches. There's nothing fancy about them. They are not waterproof. Uh, maybe you'll get lucky and get these. Uh, this was another one that I found over there. It was a buck. It's this little waterproof container. And it has some matches in it. Now... They have this little O-ring on there to make them waterproof. It's just this little crummy black O-ring. Um, what's generally going to happen is people are going to over-tighten this, and you'll see that ring kind of malform and pop out. It's no longer waterproof at that point. The trick is just to snug this cap down and not go too tight. Uh, you want that ring to bulge just a little bit, but you don't want it to be sticking out too far in any one direction. The upside of these, as crummy as they are, is that on the bottom here is just this little bitty ferro rod. Uh, and it will spark. Let's see. Maybe. There it is. So we can get a spark off this thing. Uh, that's the whole upside of this. You can get a little spark off of that. I don't know. 
you guys tell me, you know, what's going to be the best for fire? What's going to be likely to get left behind? I have no clue, guys. Uh, again, this is all conjecture. We're trying to anticipate the desperate mind. But one of the things I would think about real hard is any place that gives away matches. Uh, a lot of gas stations will have matches under the counter for when you buy cigarettes. Might be a good option. Uh, again, who knows? I think the little magnesium block is probably what I'm going to go with uh, for my loot or too late bag. I think people aren't going to take these simply because they don't know how to use them or they bought them in the past and not had good luck with them because they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, so I think for that reason this might have a good chance of getting left behind and it's probably going to be the item that I throw into my uh, loot or too late bag. But again if you guys think I'm way off base Post something. Tell me what you think is a better option, what you think is more likely to get left behind. Leave a comment. Hey, I'll change. We'll figure it out. Now, the other things I kind of came up with for fire were things that uh, are going to help us make our fire. There's three different types of chapstick. Uh, one of them is Burt's Beeswax, which is just great stuff anyway but it never hurts to have a little chapstick in your bag and it's great for starting fires uh, roll that up cut a little piece off and put it on whatever you're using for tinder whether you're lucky enough to have some uh, cotton balls or whatever and uh, it'll help your burn you'll get a little bit longer burn on there It'll help you get that fire started. Again, I don't picture them being high theft items. And if they're helping you start a fire, why not? Another one's Carmex. Carmex is great for that. Uh, you put a little on your cotton ball or your tinder. Same thing. It's going to increase your burn life, give you a better chance of getting your fire started. Uh, I didn't take any candles. I don't picture candles sticking around. I think if people are, don't have electricity they're going to be more likely to steal those candles and if you're the last looter there most of your candles will be gone however I think we've all seen the video where you can uh, light a candle or light a crayon to use for a candle so I grabbed a little eight pack of crayons uh, I'll be able to have a little bit of light in my camp maybe if I don't have a fire I can always use one of these or they are great for starting a fire too. They're no different than using wax. Uh, and that's really all you're getting here. That's what you're getting with uh, your chapstick. It's just basically wax and it burns just like it does in a candle to help your fire get started. So there you go. I mean that's kind of a gimme in my book. Alright guys, that's all I've got for fire and water. Again, make your own video, post your comments, tell me if I'm off, tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'll change, we'll all learn a little something, we'll, we'll try whatever you recommend, but this is what I came up with uh, after a few trips to the store looking around and seeing what's going on and what I could find, what I thought would be useful, and what I thought would be left behind by your average person. Uh, that you and I as survivors can make use of. So again, check us out at uszepp.com uh, as well as on our Facebook page. Uh, we are doing a contest with these videos. You make your own videos, uh, make a few comments, whatnot. Uh, you can get the official rules at usf.com or at our Facebook page. And the prize is a four-foot cold steel blowgun. It is a brand new blowgun in the package with all the little darts and stuff that come with them. Uh, I currently own one, and i got to say it's a lot of fun and far more powerful than what you might imagine. 
Uh, anyway, here's your chance to win one. It's about a $40 blowgun. You can get one for free. I'll ship it for free, everything, but you got to play by the rules, guys. All right, thanks a lot. Let us know what you think. Bye-bye.